Warning, the following content contains sounds. It has been shown that some sapiens of the Homo have episodic memory towards some sounds. Therefore, forming a bad reaction to certain sounds. Nevertheless, the sounds we use are only to mock actions and notions, which are, of course, ridiculous. We are not mocking the people who have them. No, no, no. Because you know in time, you may change what you do and change what you think. Having said that, this is a correlation sensation. A show where I talk about your mother's mammalian protuberances. Yes, yes. They come in all sorts of shapes, colors and textures and smells. But of course, we will proceed to something more important. Woman, woman, woman. I am a woman. Woman. So? Woman, woman, woman. You're the one who's... Su I'm superior to you. What? Well, I can give birth. Pa. You don't have a vagina. Well, that is not true. I have a five or nineteen, however many Purple was saying. It was three. Three. First it started off with two. Then they stuck a turkey in the other one. Yeah, I don't know. That That's what so happens long. when you have free vaginas at the, you know, morgue. That was a long time ago. Yeah? Yes. That wasn't that long ago. That was earlier this year. Yes, but it was quite a long time ago. Woman. Man. Woman, woman, woman. Man. That was a short time ago. That was less than 365 days. I don't think so. In the grand scheme of things, that is such a small amount of time. Time is a human thing. Time is everything. Time doesn't really matter. Oh, it doesn't, does it? I don't think so. Well, tell that to other musicians, eh? Musicians? What does that have to do with what we're talking about? Timing, timing. It's all about timing. I guess so. Woman. For you. Woman, woman, woman. Episode 94. Void is gone. That son of a whore. That motherfucker. I'm pissed off. Actually, yeah. that motherfucker. Seriously, he is a motherfucker. Yeah, watch out. Keep kids away. He fucks mothers. Yes, he does. Yep. Keep him away from your mother. He will fuck her. Yep. He'd probably fuck her with a wine bottle. Yeah, disgusting prick. And not the regular small one. No, the extra large bottle. Like Boone's Farm. Two liter. Boone's Farm. Lighthouse or whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, he was turning her vagina into a lighthouse. Super cute. Yeah, super cute. Yes, indeed. He could look up all up inside into the uterus. Super. Through the super cervix. Large vaginas. Yes, superly large vaginas. Anyways, this has nothing to do with the actual content of said episode. I wasn't even recording. What a fucking dumbass. Believe it or not, the woman was trying to record for a new TikTok page. And guess what? She neglected to actually hit up. What is missing, but I'm pretty sure we can make a video with a clip of audio and attach it to just a photo just so we can talk about this. Be like, huh? And then this this video that's recording now on your phone could be used afterwards. I guess so. Or before, whatever. Probably before. And then we can talk about what we were talking about before. Time. Time, yes. It's, it's not 
It's not that important. Yeah. Uh-huh. We're going to have a debate. 1500 versus now. Yes. That's a huge difference. I guess so, but... At least for humans. Yeah. In the whole world because of population and pollution from the filthy apes. Filthy apes. Filthy, filthy sapiens of the homo. Yeah. So this is episode 94. We do things like this. We're going to be talking about guess what? Guess who? Somebody named Mr. Hook. Yes. Roberto? Robert. I think his name was Roberto. That is not an English name. Roberto. I need water. Seriously? Already? You're taking forever. I'm going to have to cut I half I thought of time this. didn't matter, woman. Shut up. <laughs> so. So? So there seems to be some hub bubbling around this particular sapien of the homo named Robert Hooke. In many composition classes, the essay is structured to have some hook line in sinker load of advertisement horse shit. Ah, yes, I did intend the pun, if anyone read into my previous sentences. The bedazzlement smeared introduction starts off with the reference, quote, the Renaissance man of England, or, quote, Leonardo da Vinci of England, or something of such. This is to, to his large array of accomplishments merely showing his a grasp of physics because it takes the grasp of physics of any subject in order to figure out anything regarding said subject. If you disagree, tell me why now. You, woman. Ah. Uh, Where's your son? I have... Uh, tell me why now. I don't know. He want to answer my messages that on goddamn Instagram. Boy. And he supposedly has a broken... Phone. Yeah, I'll break his phone in his wazoo. So, second week, not here, recording with his mommy and his stepdaddy. Bastard. He is a fucking bastard. Jizz monkey. Yeah, he's that too. Cuckoo monster. Oh, he's definitely cuckoo. Watching us while he's looking out the closet while we fuck, his, we fuck each other. Probably. Yeah. You think he's he's hiding? Yes, in our I have closet? a camera in the closet. Yes. And you seen him? I have a out? video footage. He was peeking out. Oh yes, he was jerking his tiny two-inch pit or two. What a prick! What a little prick! So where the fuck was I? Oh, so these titles given for the one named Robert Hook. Oh, it's due to a large array of accomplishments. Merely showing his grasp of physics. Yes, I've already said that. Blah, 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 blah. The specified areas of study are indicated from source 1 and 2. With astronomy, physics, and biology. Ast mean what? Astronomy? Yeah. Studying the stars at the night time. They studied the stars then, too? Yes, it's a very ancient tradition for the apes. Yeah, actually, it's much less common now. The stars make lots of things happen. Yeah, lots of, lots of energy. How things, you know, affect us? The radioactive furnaces of the universe. Yes. Hey, what are we talking about? Huh? Who are we talking about? This is this is Robert Hook. Yeah. Meanwhile, source two communicates orology. That's what you do, honey. Physics, paleontology, microscopy, anatomy, and architecture. Actually, horology means to study the whore of physics called time. Ha! You I, don't know shit about horology. I thought you whore. horology was 
when I go out to the street corners and put on my sexy skirts. Maybe that's what detectives do when they capture the horse. They put on sexy skirts and they go to the street corner? Yeah. You Makes know, sense. Time is the whore of physics, you know. I guess so. Because she comes with everything. Oh, she comes with everything. Yeah. Yep, that's what horology is. Study of time. Paleontology has the Greek roots, paleos, in ontology. The paleos means of earlier times, commonly referred to as being ancient or old. Ontology is a Greek word for comprehension of something, commonly known as the study of something's essence, a.k.a. science. Oh, sirens. You hear the sirens? I hear sirens outside. I wonder if that's Void. Maybe he got in trouble. He probably got in a car accident. He couldn't see. You got that one eye. He's trying to get over here all fast-like and shit. Yeah, that's probably what happened. I bet you. Poor Void. Nah. He didn't do that. Void sucks your balls. He's probably playing with his butthole. He probably is. He's probably just jerking it. He probably just figured out his butthole. He's got this thing that hangs him upside down, so when he jerks off, it goes all over his nostrils. Yeah, he likes to snort his own spunk. Yeah. Maybe he just died from that. Maybe that's why we haven't heard from him. Yeah, he probably drowned in his own, his own, you know, sperm. Yeah, he got sperm in his brain. Ew. Instead of getting brain... He got sperm in his brain. Those little swimmers, they went up his nostrils and they swam into his brain. Made him mentally retarded and then he died from an infection. That sounds horrible. Yeah, back to topic. Now on planet Earth, on the landmass, the humans residing on it called England, there is an island, or isle if you're from there. Called Isle of Wight. No, Isle of Wight. Located south of the mainland. This is where a town called Freshwater that is on the western end of this island. This is a place where Robert Hooke, the youngest son, who mutilated his poor mother's vagina, covered in blood, piece, shit, placenta gunk, and most importantly, lactobacillus. Ah, I doubt. Robert's mother was taking antibiotics during this time, so I at least believe there would be enough lactobacillus. So, her vagina got wrecked like her, from her son? Like mine? Yeah. Probably. But a different one. He's the one. youngest one. He probably just ripped out the walls completely. Ew. Yeah. I we had a... The back end of a hammer. I don't think that's possible. Meh. Anyways. The year of Robert's birth was 1635. Source 1 indicates July 18th. But Source 2 indicates that July 18th is if you're using the old English calendar. While July 28th would be the date of this calendar's year. I don't know. July 28th, I guess. The woman who experienced the great cataclysm of giving birth was none other than Cecily, Nee Giles Hook, Nee Giles being maiden name. The father who injected semen into the female orifice of Cecily with his genetic transportation cream had the name of John Hook. John Hook is believed to have served at the local church, church parish as a curate. I did not know what kind of job a parish curate would do, so I searched on a -a ring-a-ding-ding on the ding-a-ling of Bing, and I found some mention of a bishop appointing a curate as the main priest of a parish. You use Bing as your search engine? Yeah, better than that whore Google. Everybody manoogling her Googles. 
I don't know. I'd say Bing is probably B grade. You don't know what? B is still passing. Oh, mm. yeah. 80% or higher. Oh, that's not that bad. Still not as good as Google Tits. That's still more accurate than humans have been for most of history. Pretty inaccurate species. You know, for Shut most up. of history, they believe that God cursed them when they got the viral infection. Whoa! A lot of people don't believe in God anymore because the... Oh, oh the shit. child molesting church. Yes, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All the priests. Yeah. yeah enough of the diddle diddle cats in the fiddle. Come on. Nasty. Let's go back to topic, huh? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much better time where Gro where Robert no, where Robert Hook grew up vulnerable to many diseases. He was described as a sickly child by source number one. In source number five, in source number two, regardless of his issues health wise, Robert is described as having a fertile environment for mental development. Mentions of constructing mechanical toys, models, and what have you, and composing paintings were uh Descriptors used for his childhood. During the age of 13, in 1648, Robert's paternal caregiver had expired. Oh, shit. Yes. His daddy died? Source 5 included a speculation that John Hook himself hung himself. Yes, for being a royalist at the time, for there was a lot of civil war, you know. What was a uh, royalist? Well, the... Royalists were the guys who were hugging King Charles I, where the Protestants were unruly to the bishops, such as uh, he's a daddy, you know, you know, a priest man, you know, and other men who followed royalty authority. Oh. Over that of the Protestant religion. You hear about their buddies in Missouri? Uh, I, I did. I did hear about the people in Missouri, those disgusting men on the farm. Who were eating, eating our examples for autopsy reports, you bastards. They were eating why I called those fucking agents. Human people. They were caging them and feeding the neighbors yeah. ribs. Yeah. Human ribs. Yeah. Those are the best part. They're supposed to be mine. Human ribs. Mine. All mine. My ribs. And they let the neighbors eat it. They cannot appreciate the taste of long Some pig. of these Midwest hickey fucks are disgusting. A hickey fucks? You mean when you get the hickey when you get the fucking? No, they're hicks and they're disgusting. Yeah. White trash. Yeah, but dabba do. I'm going to go get my water. So, following the suicide of uh, John Hook. Robert became an apprentice to the human named Peter Lilly. Known for painting King Charles I a year before uh, his beheading. And afterwards, he did all for Cromwell after the beheading. Lilly also was appointed as the royal painter for King Charles II. A Yale University professor had a lecture regarding Mr. Hook, where he referenced descriptions of the man. He described him as being crooked ever since he began working on machines around the age of 16. The description came from Robert Hook's executor, wrote this a couple years after Hook's death. More descriptions regarding Hook were given by Richard Waller, who knew him only in later life as being restless, even until his final moments, seldomly going to sleep prior to 2 or 3 or 4, sometimes 5 in the morning. He normally took naps during the day for rest. Naps at 16. No, when, this is when he's older. Oh. I was going to say, naps are, are very necessary. For cats? No, for old women, too. How old? 70? Any women who have children. <laughs> naps are important. You should have naps when you have children, because they're exhausting. Yeah? Yes. Like right after you give birth to the children? Definitely. 
after hours and hours of labor. Yeah. So, you know who else did hours and hours of labor? Robert Hook? Different kind of labor. It's noted that the arrangement with uh, the painter Lily was short-lived. Having Robert received schooling at Westminster College in London. Claimed to be due to Hook thinking that he could teach himself as well as Lily. And the headaches also from the oils that he was using to paint with. Robert Hook found himself under a man named Busby. Who educated a number of scientists during his lifetime. Hook is believed to have uh, learned the six books of what is called Euclid. Yeah, I guess you clit, I clit, we all clit. I got a clit. In one week. All six books in one week. You clit, yes. You have a you clit. Hook also learned how to play the organ. This was important. That's interesting. Because in 1653, at the age of 18, Mr. Hook went to Christ Church College of Oxford under having a choral scholarship. Even though during Cromwell's time there was no quarrel there because of his round-headedness, which is a slang towards the Protestants fighting against the Royalists. Roundhead slang. Round, what was the roundhead slang for? I don't know. It probably had something to do with the haircut and the fact that they were not wealthy men. Did they have a round head? You think they're talking about their penis? Mm. Maybe like they were cut? Mm. My head is round. Yes, but some people are uncut, so it's more like a... Anteater. Yes. Elephant trunk. Or uh, one of those nasty, fat, um, flesh-eating larval things. You're talking about, about that stupid movie... It was a documentary, and that was that. I don't think that was a documentary. Mm, I'm pretty sure it I'm was. pretty sure you're talking about that stupid fucking movie. And then they made a remake of it, and it fucking sucks. Oh, the second documentary is even better. What are you talking about? Wasn't it with, like, Jamie Kennedy or, or some shit? Nah. Nah. So, you know, 53... 1653 was 11 years later to the Civil War, which is used for the narrative of that of Thomas Willis becoming fixated on medicine rather than becoming a, a religious worker, even though there's other people who have different narratives for that. Who is Thomas Willis, you might say? Someone right now is thinking that. Who the fuck is Thomas Willis? What are all these names? Blah, blah, blah. Guess what? Thomas Willis, we have done episodes with him, so, or of him. Yeah, not with him. That would be like, um, I wouldn't be able to go back. Maybe you can go back in time. Never again. Done that once. Don't want to do that. What happened? You know what happened with Marty McFly? No. He became his own grandfather. So you're your own grandfather? And my own mother. Okay, I, there's something I didn't know about you, sweetie. Just learning more and more every single day. Yep. So you're your own mother and grandfather. Yep. Have you ever seen The Stupids? Every day. It <laughs> when I'm driving. <laughs> It's a movie. It's a movie with um Arnold. What's his name? Arnold fucking. What's his fucking name? Schwarzenegger. No. Tom Arnold. That's what it is. Okay. Oh, so, Arnold Tom. No, Tom Arnold. And it's a movie. It's called The Stupids. And he goes on this talk show and he makes um a song and it goes. Many, many years ago when I was 23, and then, I don't know, a whole bunch of other fucking words, and then he's like, my, my own grandpa. Yeah, so, while going to college, we have Hook working with Willis, 
while he was a famous neuroscientist, or more specifically, neuroanatomist, and Hook, you know, became underneath Willis, until he met Robert Boyle, because he was a wealthy man. Thomas Willis was, too, maybe not as much as Boyle, though. So, uh, in 1655, it seems as though uh, Hook uh, wasn't well-funded, so he became to work for the Boyle man, you know. He worked underneath the lower meninges of the Boyle. Do you want to listen to this song? No, not really. I think it might be, you know, what you might call it. What do they call it? What do your son say, like, trademark or copyright or... Yes. Oh, yeah, you don't... I don't want to do that, you know. I don't want to do Fine. I'll show it to you later, though, because I want you to see it. We have to watch that movie. You know, the sound of what I think the song for the stupids would be a bunch of honking and screeching tires and crashing cars. No, they're looking for the drive B. The drive B? Yes. <laughs> what? It's the dumbest movie. They are seriously so stupid. The stupids. You guys have to watch it. It's fucking hilarious. Okay, sorry. Don't recommend anything, because everybody will say, Oh, they recommended it. It's terrible. You waste my time. Where's my money? No, it's fucking hilarious. Watch it. I know what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, I'm I'm smart and all-knowing. It was probably like a D-rated movie, but it's awesome. Oh, like The Room. It was never in theaters. I'll tell you that. Mm, neither was her porno. Who's porno? You and me. Oh, yes. Yeah, our porno. Tom Arnold was uh, Roseanne's husband. Oh, that fuck. Yeah. That's Tom Arnold. Yes. He looks like a Tom Arnold. Not the guy who was her Not husband. And, no. Yeah. Yeah. Not Goodman. Yeah. He, yeah. The other guy who yeah. would be his friend and, you yeah, know. Yeah, he actually came out of the closet, right? Nah, I'm just joking. I don't know. I, I, I can't remember. Yeah, so anyways, let's talk about Boyle Man, okay? Uh, yes, yes, go ahead. You're the one who's, like, talking about this yeah. movie and stuff. Back to the topic. Boyle is known for science, yes. What type of science one is thinking right now? Source 1 indicated a range, from astronomy to chemistry. Then along comes sources 2 and 3, YouTube video and Britannica, not mentioning the areas of study. Instead, Britannica specifies the type of work to be of constructing an air pump, named the Boylean air pump. This reminds me more and more of Leonardo the Bastard, which we also have an episode on him too. Boyle Man wanted to get this machine made by his specifications, and he went to such lengths to get someone that is known for being famous for making machines, or instruments if you will. His name was Ralph Peter who was unable to meet the specifications for the air pump, as you might have already guessed. Then, in the mid-twenties of his age, Robert Hooke came along and was able to do what Prater could not. So, was Peter named after anything special? Who's Peter? The, the guy... Peter. Ralph Prater. Yes, Ralph. Prater. Ah, oh, I thought you said Peter. Yeah, you were always thinking about Peter. I was getting excited. Yeah, you are. I do always think about Peter. Peter Frampton. No, that's not the Peter I think about. Peter Pan? <laughs> yes, I think about Peter Pan every day. Or Peter Piper? Yes, Peter Piper, Piper picked... Some pickled peppers or some shit. Or Peter the Pooper Scooper. Who is Peter the Pooper Scooper? Oh, that neighborhood Nazi dude. The guy who picks up all the dog shit in the neighborhood? Yeah, then mows then your sh lawn. He sniffs it. And then, and then gets speed bumps by driving back and forth over where they're counting the number of cars that are passing through. Yeah, really super fast. Yeah, 
Yeah, totally breaking the law she's trying to enforce with these speed bumps. They really don't do much. Pretty sure he complains that they're going too fast when they're just going 25. 25 seems like a lot when you're driving 25 in a neighborhood. Yeah, it does. But, I mean, that's the speed limit, so. Yes. Oh, best thing to do is just have a cop sitting there at every single corner. Okay, let's not talk about the neighborhood Nazi. Okay. He gets on my nerves. So, by the age of 23 in 1658, Robert is somehow the one person to discover elasticity. I find this to be dumb to claim, like how Benjamin Franklin somehow discovered electricity. I mean, it's bullshit. You should know that's bullshit. Anybody watching the damn sky when electricity is going off is lightning. Wouldn't see electricity. They discovered it. Uh, anyways, the law of elasticity is credited to being discovered by Robert Hooke. My vagina. Hook. Robert Hooke. No, it was lost by your vagina. Hey, that's not very nice. After I ruined it. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, yes. You do have a very big cock. Yeah. 25 inches in diameter. Jesus Christ. Is that how big it is now? Bigger than a car rim, baby. You need to stop exercising your dick. Nope. That's enough. No more for you. I want to get splitting done. You want to get what done? Splitting. Like you want to split me in half or what? I have oh. no idea what your reference is. I'm a logger too. Lumberjack. You're going to split your dick in half? Yeah. Is that something you think you should do? All the time. I, I don't think that's safe. Why not? That might mess with your nerves. So anyways, the law goes as follows. The stretching of a solid body is proportional to the force applied to it. How is that not something that just goes without saying? How do you not realize that? I think it's because the explicit statement from Robert himself made him the first. Although it's pretty obvious that spend enough time with a spring or a coil or... Or how about this? A ball in the arrow. You could totally tell that the force that you apply is the force that gets transmitted. The bow and arrow, who did not know that? Who? Obviously, humans didn't realize that. When there's momentum, it's hard to just stop something. This has nothing to do with elasticity. Whatever. <laughs> Your reference didn't either. What? <laughs> That's exactly what he's talking about. A coil, a spring. I don't know what you're talking about. A bow and arrow. It's a spring. Literally. They bow. That's not a spring. It works with spring action. That's exactly what elasticity nope. is referring to. Nope. It's re lies. Woman lies. Woman, woman, woman. Cha cha. Ninety four. If you like us, go back for some more. You should like and subscribe to us now. Do it now. The most important part of the expression released by Hooky Monster comes from Hook himself. Understanding a way to improve watch springs coming from Source 3 Brit Face. While the tube of you who clip indicated that it's known that Hook improved with this pendulum funky thing. I got a pendulum. But this pendulum has two arms at the top, making like a T-shape, but with like hooks, they angle downward with a gear around it with one-way teeth. This function helps adding a little extra push to the pendulum to make the clock more accurate over longer periods of time. Oh, is that like the clicking sound? Yeah, it's originally used for like you know, pendulum clocks, but uh, Hook wanted to uh, improve on it and made it like a spring function for pocket watches. That's why you had to wind it up. 
it winds up this spring. So, the hook monkey Robert made a connection with Christopher Wren as well, which makes sense since uh, Robert Hook was among the circle of the well-known humans who are studying reality with Christopher Wren. And Christopher Wren is most noted for architecture. By the year of 1662, Robert Hook Pants became the experiment curator for the group called the Royal Society of London. It's indicated as being a newer formed group during his lifetime. Once 1663 came up and down Hook's back at the age of 28, with the help of the Boyle monster, Robert Hook was accepted into the social group, although there are plenty of differences between Leonardo da Vinci, the bastard, and Robert, Captain Hook. One thing they had in common is that uh, they needed to make money, and uh, Robert Hook was also viewed as different from his peers in the Royal Society. It's claimed that by five that the society was without experiments to do, so the society used Robert Hook to create inventions for more experiments to be performed because they ran out of ideas. And also, Robert Hook had a crook in his back. Captain Hook back, too. Robin Hook? Robert Hook. Hook. <laughs> There's no Batman. <laughs> Pay attention, woman. Why are you laughing? Robert Hook had a crooked back. Okay. Yes, he had sure. Captain Hook a crooked back. From bending over with the machines. Yes. Robert Hook was a crook. That's what the executor said about Robert Hook. He said Rob he had a crooked back because he bent over playing with his machine. He was a crook and he stole lots of ideas. Fuck you. Bullshit. Yes, he did about the snowflakes. Don't you lie. Gonna, How dare you? I'm going to start shit with if you. If you listen to that motherfucker on Source 5, you clearly show how ridiculous it is to think that Robert Hook took the idea from these guys because of the thief. structures. He's a thief. Just because they look similar, Robert Hook actually noted the actual structure of that goddamn snowflake and the mm. angles. The other guys were off. Back to topic. Four novel experiments were performed every week on Wednesday. Fortnite? Four novel experiments were performed every week on Wednesday by Robert Hooke. Oh, For okay. the Royal Society of Tards. Sorry, I thought Robert Hooke was playing Fortnite or something. In the 1600s? 1660, whatever? Yeah, why not? Okay. So... There is a high street of Oxford, that's what the street's called, where it used to have a place where Boyle and Hook, you know, did a lot of lab work, you know. The building was torn down, and now there is a plaque where the building once stood, stating that Captain Hook and the pus filled Boyle worked there from 1665 to 1668 for three whole years. This is where Hook designed the microscope that assisted the whole group of wealthy people especially Thomas Willis and others. Yeah. They apparently cared very little for Hook. Did it, they go to school around the same time? Thomas Willis was like 20 years older or so. Oh, okay. Most of them were older, and they seemed like older guys who lost ideas because they came up with less, and it seemed like they got the younger Hook coming over uh, with all their shit hunched back, and they probably... That little of them, because a lot of people look down on people who are hunched over like that. Or who who don't look like everybody else. I don't, they got a different thing going on there. There's something wrong, and I'm going to fucking figure it out. And then I'm going to look for everything wrong. Then I'm going to make a story based off of all my perception, trying to stare at everything wrong. I think that's probably the worst thing about society, is everybody looks at... What somebody looks like or talks like. Yeah, who cares if I have two bulbous meninges on top of my head? And then they judge them by their looks or how they talk. Like me and my lisp. The most important thing we should take from this 
is that a lot of these people's experiments were brought about because Hook was able to construct these things, these instruments, for their experiments. Nobody else was doing it for them. And apparently, even the pump that Mr. Boyleface used was something constructed by Robert Hook in the main famous Masturbator Praetor could not construct a pump, but it's still called the boiling pump or bullshit, whatever have you, whatever, what have you. So he couldn't put it together, but he got the credit. Oh, yeah, because it was from his specifications. And I have no doubt that he couldn't possibly have made it because he's not a hands-on kind of guy. He's a wealthy man. Yeah. He, he was more of a dabbler in science. And since he paid for someone to do something, he got the credit. That's ridiculous. It's, it's like most institutions. Yeah. Or like studies. Studies are paid for. Yeah. So somebody's, you know. Oh, yeah. Especially when it comes to perception for creating certain things for people. You have to get good PR. You have to do studies that lean in your favor in some way. I think the best thing that I was ever judged for was my lisp. When I did my work on the corner, a lot of men were like, oh, yeah, you know how to suck dick just because I have a lot of saliva in my mouth. That's exactly what I thought. That's not very nice. Nothing's more attractive than your knees being covered in slobber. Just all of it just stripping down. We need to do that in a bathtub again. Yeah? Is that where you like it done? Yeah. Okay. Until I either fall down from the slipperiness or I ejaculate. Okay. Sounds like a plan. So, we're going to go over some accomplishments of Mr. Hookade. Okay? Okay. When Sounds comes, good. When it comes to the pump that Hook had made, the only publicly known surviving artifact of this original pump is a tiny piston, which is said to be in the Historical Museum of Science at Oxford. Like all the other instruments of Hook, the rest of the pump is said to have been discarded after his death. But I want to think that those apes, those male apes, one would call a female hygiene flushing bag, took the devices for their own experiments, for their own credit. Here's a list of instruments he is said to have uh, invented. We have one, the universal joint. It's used to connect the engine to uh, um, the wheels right now in vehicles. Then we have the anchor escapement, which is what I was talking about with the pendulum. Yes. Or the clock. Yeah. Where it goes back and forth. Yeah. So, yeah, he designed, he even has diagrams describing, he's a good artist, or he was a good artist, describing the pocket watch with the spring. That was his major improvement upon it. And also the iris diaphragm, not the one for sex, but, you know, for bellowing, pneumatic devices. Number four is the smooth, quiet helical gears. This design is also used in cars with universal joints. If one does a search on any search engine, whether it's Bing or Google, one will observe gears that have an, a helical shape. Imagine that. Helical gears having a helical shape. Yeah. You don't say. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So, Robert Hook designed them in large stacks with each other with rounded teeth instead of the sharp jutted teeth because there's been a problem since he was around to uh, have a noises, noise issues and slipping with these type of gears. They're not a very easy gear to have work if you don't know what you're doing. So, it's kind of the gears on like you see on these little kids' toys where you turn them and they're all round and they all go together like a... Yeah, except for these are helical. So, like, if you're looking at it at the side angle, you know, where the ridges are? Yes. They kind of make it like a slight S shape. Gotcha. You want to look? Sure. Interesting. Yeah, you do see those on cars. Yeah. You also see them on a computer screen. Yes. <laughs> when you Google them. <laughs> Some people say that he invented the telephone. 
This is the tin can telephone. The tin can. <laughs> the tin can telephone. The tin can. The tiki tiki torch. The tin can. Tiki torch. Yeah, so it uses vibrations to send signals quick. Hook is said to have described it as fast as light, but that's not true because it's just sound. So, ah. But it's fast and it's local. So that's nice. So, no spy. We'll get some cans and we'll oh, put Oh, you some, got two. Some string. You actually on got there. three. If you want to count the badonk dunk. So, anyways, we will get some cans and put some string and let's um practice. Yeah, we could do that in a video. Make some telephone. Yeah, we could do that with the holes that are mysteriously in this room's walls. Yes. Creepy, creepy holes. From one room to the other. Where you can see clearly, if you want to, into the other room. Not not weird at all. Nope. Nope. I just have no idea why there would be some. You know, Void was walking around with one of those little drills. Ma manual drills. Didn't you have some of those little, like, spy cameras, too? Uh... What the fuck? You think he's watching us? You think he's working with the government? That bastard. They're watching us through our telephones and our computers anyways. Yeah, but you know how I speak in my native tongue. Yeah, they can't, they don't understand that. Yeah, it interrupts a lot of frequencies. They're stupid. Void might be knowing what's going on inside our box. You think he's in the box? He's in a box. Oh, gotcha. He's in a box. Yeah. Anyways, let's go back to topic. Yes. So number six, he has what are called the two-leafed sashed weighted windows. Prior to this, nobody knows if anyone had made a two-slated window that could slide open and shut. You know, they used to be on those hinges. Yes. But these were like... So he's credited for inventing that, even though it doesn't seem that far-fetched that someone else might have done it too. That's an accomplishment, though. The most important thing I want people to know is that he invented the dome of the St. Paul's Church. And Christopher Wren is credited for being the architect for the church. And the dome for the church is actually three domes. The outer is around, seemingly made to denote the quote-unquote heavenly perfection, which would explain why believing that the elliptical shape for orbiting planets would shake the perception the church has displayed for perfection about the spherical or the circular orbit. Unfortunately, the outer dome of this church is not strong enough to hold the lantern on top of it, so there has to be what is called a conic dome, which is more pointy. It's using angular force to strengthen the outer dome's top to hold up the lantern. Then there's what is called the inverted Catenary Dome for self-supporting arch, invented by Hook. So in 1675, he published this, this invention or this subscription tool, along with the spring law. In the publication, the law was written in a scramble, which is known as an anagram. Yeah. And only the Hook's executor, after Hook's death, was able to unscramble the scramble. And here's what it was written as. A, B, C, 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 D, D, E, 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 F, G, 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 I, 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 J, 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 M, 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 N, N, N. So he was basically saying, fuck you guys. Just a whole bunch of letters, huh? Just a whole bunch of letters. Yep. It almost looked like if someone fell asleep on their computer keyboard. The unscrambled version is Ut Pendut Continuum Flexil. Sick Stabat. Contingum rigidum inversum. Poof. Not the last part. This translates to hangs a flexible cable. So inverted stand the touching pieces of an arch. Unlike a mathematician, Hook does this all in analog style, meaning that Hook observed, he took note, and he applied and communicated through means of art and written word, rather than math. 
This is done so anybody reading the written language and understands the written language, along with knowing what he's depicting on the picture, can reproduce this. So he wanted nobody to be able to read you what he did? No, he wanted anybody who was able to figure out what it was for to unscramble the title. It was the titles of what he fucked with. The eighth thing I want to talk about is the barometer, which utilized the dial for the mercury reading, mercury reading rather than the normal lines on the glass tool. He also invented the hygrometer, which is used for humidity reading. Number 10, he uh, designed a weather clock with five different measurements with wind direction and wind speed and a bunch of other things that Source 5's lecturer speaking from the Yale of University for the Abu Dhabi, New York University, blah, 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 blah. He was speaking to them. And that's basically how he described it. So that's what I got. And this also made a recording of the data. I don't know how, because he didn't really describe it very well. The eleventh thing would be the telescope site for leveling, used in uh, construction, you know, when you're building things. A leveler? Yeah. Gotcha. Number twelve would be the compound microscope. Hook described this as a way for humankind to actually give back to nature, because they've worked so hard to get away from nature. This was because you were able to observe living organisms at the microscopic level, when people did not even believe it. Some some people actually didn't believe it and thought it was more of an illusion created by the lenses. Simple-minded folks. But Hook used this for creating what is called cell theory. He invented a lot of stuff. He did a lot of stuff. This guy was a genius. I'm starting to think Hook was something to do with a genetic thing around, regarding his back. Maybe he had Schurman kyphosis. Yeah. Perhaps. Made him a genius? I don't think that made him a genius. Maybe, I don't know. Genetics can have impacts on multiple different I traits. I think it made him a genius. Yeah. The power of the hunch. I have a hunch. Ha, 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 ha. Puns intended. Genius. So, anyways... I know you love me, baby. He discovered the spots on Mars and Jupiter, too. He also discovered the ch- what are called the Chalabni figures now, which are named after some dude 100 years after Hook. This is the effect of sound waves from certain shaped objects with sand by Chalabni, but flour was used by Hook. The sound was generated when you took a bow for like a violin or another stringed instrument and you rubbed it against the edge. Then, the unorganized particles you have put on top of the object will move into a symmetrical figure, a beautiful shape. Yes, we were talking about that earlier. There are some really cool YouTube videos that you will see this done with, like, certain frequencies, and they will make certain shapes. And I have some reason to believe in Asia they had discovered this way before Europeans. This would be because of the culture of meditation and yoga, specifically in India too, would be focusing on things. This is why they have chakra bowls. Yes, chakra bowls are awesome. If you put water inside of a chakra bowl and some sort of floating objects, it will come to a certain organization when you make the ringing of the bell. Even or the just board. having light shine on there in a certain direction, you can see the you can see the water move. It's really cool. And they even say that if you put water in there and do the sound thing and then drink the water, you're drinking the frequency and it can actually help heal certain parts of you. Given that the recent discoveries have proved that many yogis are able to do mind-blowing things with how they perceive senses from their bodies, like blocking out pain reception proven by fMRI studies, or even people who are able to regulate their body's circulatory system, like, ooh, I don't know, what's that one guy's name, Wim Hof? Yeah. 
So, uh, you know, there's certain things to reality that are not focused on a society that's hell-bent on consuming things rather than just observing the bare necessities with certain other objects that you have designed. Finding joy in the places that you already are instead of thinking that money or objects are going to actually bring you happiness. Great thing can come from boredom as long as you apply it to something productive. Art is a good example of that. So, one thing credited to Hook, Captain Hook again, is in geology. He describes how fossils were just fossilized remains, not nature fooling with people's perception of the past. And some dude in 1692 published a book named, or some dude named John Aubrey published a book in 1692 that was reviewed by an ape man named John Ray, who was considered a bishop, I think, who received the credit. The guy doing the review received the credit. Hook then wrote a, a letter, and then uh, another letter was written to Ray, describing about how it's kind of funny how a lot of my hypotheses are used in this book, and the no mention of me, but mention of Ray. Is that nice? They didn't mention you in this book, sweetie? No, Captain Hook. Robert oh. Hook. I was going to say, I didn't know you expected to be in this book. Back to Dobbin. He demonstrated the flow of blood in the roll of the lungs with the blood to the Royal Panty Liner Society with a gruesome experiment with some dogs and noted by Hook himself or someone else that Hook refused to do it again. And, uh, and Hook was seemingly being used more and more. The more I read about, you know, how people write about him or how he wrote things and letters or maybe his book. In 1663, Hook was involved in so much where credit would go to others, such as Wren, Ray, Boyle, and so forth. He, he made like a synthetic eye that would basically act as a regular eye. He also made a slide projector and uh, stitching of a dog skin's back or the stitching of the skin back onto a dog after it was peeled. It was another gruesome experiment, probably part of the same one where he had to show the relationship with the lungs and blood and how lungs worked. He is said to do all this and much more within three weeks with the society. But the credit went to all these other guys mentioned. That's not cool. At the age of 30, in 1665, he accepted a position as a professor of geometry since he was not getting paid by the society as he was told he was going to be paid at what is called the Grisham College in London. He resided in a corner of this quadrangled building. He even made uh, what is called a zenith telescope. It was uh, fixed to look in only one direction for observing the flow of everything from that one position over time. It failed to prove what he wanted to prove with this tool, which was that planets orbit in an elliptical manner, not spherical. Um, one of the reasons is because the building was not sturdy enough to hold the telescope in place completely. I want to get a telescope. I think we should get one. Yes, me too. I want to check out what the neighbor's doing. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe. For me, I want to look at the planets and the stars. No, you want to just, like, focus on something that's really not that important? Like another person and what they're doing with their life because your life is so boring and you have no aspirations whatsoever because you're an old, crusty neighborhood Nazi? I have used my binoculars to look in other people's windows. I mean, they weren't in the windows when I did it. I probably shouldn't have that on recording. <laughs> yeah, I used to fuck gods. Bah. That, there you go. So, the great googly moogly fire of London in 1666, we have discussed in the Thomas Willis biography episode, much of London would have had room for new structures being built. This was an opportunity for Robert Hooke to become a surveyor for the city of London. Many new designs for both buildings and streets came about because of the London Fire and Robert Hooke, along with Christopher Wren, 
More specifically, Hook is communicated for being an assistant to Christopher Wren. That's the surveyor part. Not much is relayed by sources 1 and 3, so I found source 4. Source 4 indicated that most of Hook's buildings didn't survive in the 19th century, making his contributions less known today from those of Christopher Wren. I read that Hook had some idea that he thought would be beneficial, but the cost for it, and the cost for all the construction, along with compensation for altering property lines, would lead to a narrative as why he would become surveyor rather than the head. So, rather than becoming the creative planner, he was still the creative planner, who helped out a lot with the architecture, and uh, he was said to be more constrained by assuring that regulations of the buildings would be sound, and he would adhere to pop property rights. Public clocks, what are called quays, markets, bridges, pavements, and sewers, are more of what Robert Hooke is known for. This would explain why Robert Hooke is less focused on when it comes to architecture when you compare him to Christopher Wren, even though Christopher Wren is credited for the architecture of the St. Paul Cathedral with no real mention of Hooke. Thank you, Christopher Wren. Asshole. In 1665, Robert wrote a book, we're going back in time now, called Micrographia. Where in the preface, he described the 17th century as an age out of all others, where people began to be more inquisitive rather than worshipping the authoritative dogma that so many people do during this time now. In 1776, though, we're jumping forward now, all ten years after the Great Fire, Hook used an anagram for his book of On Elasticity. It was C-E-I-I-I-N-O-S-S-S-T-T-U-V. In 1678, two years after, the anagram was unscrabbled into Ut Tensio Sic Vis, which translates into English as Of Spring. Later on, Boyle wrote a book about spring too, called The Spring of Air, born from experiments out of the machine that Robert Hooke made. The machine is not named after Hooke, it's named after that bastard. Back to Richard Wallace. Yes. Is indicated by Wallace that Robert Hooke had a melancholic temperament, untrusting of others, and filled with jealousy. This description is in regards to him being as an older sick man. Earlier in Hooke's life, he is described as being an open communicator, willing to share his ideas with others in academia. This was until some unforeseen accidents which made Hooke reserve. The accidents were actually moments that damaged Hook's psyche, like people abusing his abilities and not giving him credit whatsoever. I was going to say, it probably has a lot to do with, I wouldn't trust people when they steal my work and then they put their shit on my name, or my na their name on my shit. Yeah, what she said. That's fucked up. Yeah, Hook claimed that many colleagues, colleagues would tape take perceptions from Hook, and proclaim them for their own, which of course is evident in all the things I talked about. There's another Sabian of the Homo who talks about Robert Hook. His name is Samuel Pepys, where he is related to say that Hook appeared as the least due to his hunchback, his Captain Hook back. But Hook is the most compared to the others and what they truly have to offer. So, there's some fucking evidence right there. We are going to have to cut this. This this is this is just part one of the biography of the sapien of the homo called Robert Captain Hook. Robert Captain Hook, huh? Yeah. That's what we're going to call him now? Yep. Captain Robert Hook. The hooky pants. Captain Robert Hook. Big hook monster. He's got the big hook. And he got the hook and crook and back. Oh, you think his hook was big? Oh, definitely. That one must have been a big hooky back. Yeah. You think put, people put their Captain Hooks on the back of Captain Hook? 
I don't know, but this guy did a lot of stuff, so I'm glad there's going to be a part two, so we can talk about all of his discoveries and inventions. We talked about basically what he's credited for. Now we're just going to finish his later half of his life. Yeah, but I think there's... And his big dispute with another famous sapien of the homo. Oh, yeah, who? Oh, that's for next episode. Okay, I can't wait. I'm really excited. Yeah. This is probably like, this guy, for some reason, is very interesting to me. Yeah, because there's a lot of more detail given around people this time, because you have more letters. Yes. And uh, I'm really glad I found this Yale professor who gave this lecture. He's really good. Like, a lot of good details came from him. Yeah, and I like how he really invented a lot of things and a lot of different things that have to do with a lot of different objects that we use today. Yeah, well, because he saw that he could learn from his own experiences just as well as he could learn from what people say. Yeah. Plus, you can actually question what he's taught. This would explain why he was able to think outside the box or complete experiments that people never thought of being possible at that Royal Society of Panty Liners. Royal Society of Panty Liners, huh? Yeah. They are a bunch of female hygiene expulsion experiments. So, were they like for light days or heavy days or overnighters? Definitely overnighters. Okay. Makes sense. You never know what's going to happen. No, you don't. No. Even the overnighters leak. So, honey. Yes? Do we have a, a tribe, you think? A tribe? Yeah, we have a tribe, right? Yes, we do. We have like 14 people in it. Yeah, I think there's going to be a few more added on very soon. Yeah, actually there's one. He's a sniper, or he was. Yes? By the time he listens to us, it might be two years from now. So he's slowly but surely working his way up. Oh, yes. If he doesn't get offended too much and he reaches this point. Wow. And then there's this other one who's a trimmer. He trims trees. The devil's lettuce. He trims devil's lettuce. Devil's lettuce. Yes, the devil's... Market product? What, is this right next to the hydroponic lettuce? Yes. Or the iceberg lettuce? It's, it is... Head of lettuce? The devil's lettuce. Why, it's got horns? Is it red? It's got lots of crystals. Crystals? People and, eat lettuce with crystals? And little orange hairs. Maybe orange hairs? That sounds gross. Orange. What, firecrouch lettuce? It, it's really good stuff. Really? Yeah. I believe it comes from California. This is a farmer. Yeah, he's a farmer. Yeah? Yeah, he he farms. Oh, this is the Dallas and the Oregon. This is the point where your son would repeat the same comment three or four episodes ago. We said, oh, that's a bloody organ. Yeah? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he, he's, yeah, he says some stupid shit. So, so how do you get inside the tribe? So, basically, you have to follow all of the social medias that you have, share them, you know, share an episode or just the whole podcast, and leave a review. It has to be a five-star review. Yeah. No, it doesn't have to. No. But leave an honest review, it must please. Must be five. And then... You want to suck my balls. Find the correlation, or is it correlation sensation podcast on Instagram or Facebook? Well, Facebook is I think it's called the correlation sensation. The correlation on Instagram sensation on Instagram. It's really easy. If you just look up the correlation sensation, how did you find us in the first place, huh? If Go you just searched it up in the Google tits. Then go to the social media apps below and... Yeah, the brain emblem will be there. Go to the accounts, follow them, You just use your noggins, come on. Then message Gork, my sweetie dumpling yes. snook em if pie. if I haven't been banned from Twitter, yes. 
So message him. Message me. And show us your screenshots. Goddamn right. And then and give me dick pics. No way. Fuck. No, yes. don't do that. Send him no. lots no. of dick pics. God damn it. God so damn it. So he can jerk off. Fuck you, woman. On my tits. Only your dick, baby. Yeah, you Which is on me. You like my dick. Yeah, it feels good when I stick it in you. Yes, it does. Bah. Anyways, so um, once you message and show us you've done these things, we will give you a tribe member name and a free t-shirt. Yes, and the t-shirt is glow in the dark, limited edition, a negative of our first emblem we have. Yes, and there's only a hundred t-shirts made, so... And pretty soon, we're going to come up with another emblem cover art for our podcast. So you will have the first edition and ever no made. And others will be there except for a hundred. Or maybe a hundred and two. Yes, because of us? Well, because family members want some. Okay, so maybe a little more than a hundred, but yeah, only... family, I guess, is part of the tribe. They don't get a position like you will. No, like we have the nut gatherer, yes. who is right here. That's me. Yeah. I gather lots of nuts. That is true. The lots nuts that nuts. get squirted in my face, and they go to the nut hunter. And when there's I nuts mean, the in my hunter. pussy, and there's nut on my back, and then there's actual like. The nuts outside on the ground that I gather. Yeah, then we have the squirrel hunter. We actually have some music we have played for by him in the past. The squirrel hunter, yes. Yeah, and then we also have, uh, what is it? Nut picker. And the nut commander. With the nut driver, the nut trapper. With the nut taster. Did I say nut driver? Yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah, the nut taster. The logger. We have the logger, which is Tom Nye. He's the newest one. Yeah, we have the wood splitter, the rock smasher. We have the rock grinder. We have the rock milker. And then we have... We have... We need builders. The witch doctor. We have the witch doctor. Now, if this Adam guy gets his shit together, he might be like... Oh, I don't know. Security. The nut commander. The nut launcher. Oh, that's a good one. He should be the oh, nut launcher. Because you collect so many nuts that we don't need all those nuts for hunting squirrels. So we can use those nuts to be launched at our enemies. We need some builders, too. We got to build our community. Yeah, we need our Christopher Wrens and our Robert Hooks. Yes, guys. Hurry up. Get your shit together. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Hey, what do we do, woman? Oh, uh, we have to leave in peace. Yeah, peace. Bye.